Hey folks, welcome to the news wrap up where I talk about a number of different current affairs in the history, archaeology, and museum related realms. A lot of the time on this channel I do deep dives, like last week when Cossie and I discussed the latest Roman TikTok trend, but sometimes these videos are nice to do because I can cover uh, a number of topics at once, which I don't always have time to get to, and I get to give my two cents, you get to stay informed about what's happening in the world, and it's a win-win for everybody. If you really like these news wrap-ups, or if there is a story that you think that I should talk about, please throw them in the comments because I want to make sure that people actually enjoy this sort of thing, and I also just love hearing about other things that I might not have come across while doing the research for this video. But without any further ceremony or ado, let's get into the first story that I have for you today. Today we are going to start the news in the United States at the Mütter Museum, a medical museum that features anatomical models, medical instruments, as well as human remains. They have announced that they will not be hosting their annual Halloween fundraiser, Mischief at the Mütter. The event, which was held last year, was described as a night of bloodthirsty refreshments, crawling snacks and surprises, telepathic tarot reading, out-of-this-world contortionists, a thrilling DJ set by DJ Lola Kinks, and private access to our disturbingly informative collection. This event has been cancelled because the Mütter has been undergoing some self-reflection, specifically concerning the human remains in their collections, and hosting an event where there is a DJ and contortionists and tarot readings right next to your unethically collected human remains is a little... Meh. I have done an entire video on human remains and museum displays already, so I'm not going to go super deep into my own opinions on this matter, but I do think it is important to note that a lot of these human remains were collected before the codification of modern ethical standards. So, as a result, a lot of the human remains that are in storage and on display are there without the consent of the individual, and in medical and anthropological practice, that is a big no-no, especially for a 21st century uh, institution such as the Mütter. With that being said, there is a new director at the Mütter. Kate Quinn arrived at the museum late last year and has been the driving force of this self-reflection. According to Philadelphia Magazine, Quinn has ignited a debate over the ethics of how its human remains are handled and displayed. In a series of moves, she pulled down most of the museum's online content for review, called out her predecessor's lack of ethical standards, and announced the first systematic audit of the collection since World War II. I still do believe in the power of collections to teach, Quinn says but the ethics have to be at the forefront of what you're doing. Excuse me for a moment. Yes! This is wonderful news and it is a shining example of what so many museums in the world are working towards right now and we'd love to see it. Although these decisions have of course been met with a lot of criticism and some tension, this is ultimately the ethical thing to do. It appears that Quinn wants the museum to focus less on death and pathology and more on health and wellness, which is a really interesting way to turn this museum around, and I've never visited before, but I really hope that one day I can go and check it out for myself. The happy museum stories don't stop there though, because I have another story for you about repatriation. In 1929, a Canadian anthropologist removed a totem pole from the Nisga First Nation in what is today known as British Columbia. They sold it to the National Museum of Scotland and it has been on display there ever since. It is also important to note that the repatriation of this pole was negotiated by the Nisga as a self-governing nation, so the Canadian government wasn't involved in any part of the process, and I imagine that that is very fulfilling for the Nisga nation. There were many personal and sacred items that were removed from First Nations people's possession in the 19th and 20th century across Canada, 
and a lot of it was done, quote, legally. This next story is a little bit of an odd one, but people are understandably really upset about it. A little over a week ago, the infamous sycamore tree that sat in the eponymous sycamore gap was felled, it was chopped down. The gap is on the longest remaining stretch of a Roman border known as Hadrian's Wall that was built up around the beginning of the second century AD. The sycamore tree is not nearly as old as the wall that it stood beside, but at an estimated age of 300 years old, it is still considered a huge, heartbreaking loss to a lot of people. It was a staple of the landscape, and it was even featured in a few movies, including Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, starring Kevin Costner and a truly abysmal English accent. But I'm free. Now I beg you to free yourself of your vow. Return with the boat. I know how it feels to be so far from your home and family. This is a very beautiful place in Northumberland, England, one that I have been privileged enough to go and visit. And I honestly am also quite crushed at the loss of this tree. I was hoping to travel out that way next year. And I think next time I'm out there, whether it's next year or a couple years from now, it is definitely going to be a gut punch to be looking across that landscape and to see the gap empty. There is some good news though. While this tree was chopped down with the intent to hurt the community that treasures this spot on the landscape, two people have been arrested. And it is believed that the tree can be regrown using a method called coppicing. Coppicking? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. Which, according to Wikipedia, is the traditional method in woodland management of cutting down a tree to a stump, which in many species encourages new shoots to grow from the stump or roots, thus ultimately regrowing the tree. It will be decades or even hundreds of years before the tree reaches its former size, but it's nice to know that all is not completely lost. If we head down south a little bit from the Sycamore Gap to London, we of course have to talk about the fucking British Museum and uh, the robbery story that has been just ongoing and how that is currently still unfolding. If you don't know about the British Museum robbery, I highly recommend checking out my previous video, which will be linked up here somewhere or in the description. But if you don't feel like it, the TLDR is basically that there was a British Museum curator that had been pinching items from the collection for years and years and years and then selling them on eBay. And now the British Museum wants your help to get everything back. The museum has launched a page on their website where you can see pictures of some of the items that were stolen, which of course they don't have pictures of everything that was stolen because they don't pay their back of house staff enough to do less than three jobs at once. And they have also added a handy little email address at the bottom of the page where you can report a found missing item. The response to this is kind of as expected. People are still just pissed that it happened in the first place. The British Museum wants your help to find a bunch of stolen items. Hey Alice, yeah? the British Museum wants our help to find a bunch of stolen items. But you know where the stolen items are, Alice? In the place where they were in the beginning? They're in the British Museum, that's exactly right! And I think despite my, my tone when I first introduced this story and some people griping on Twitter and other corners of the internet, this isn't a bad idea. This is kind of the best way to go about it. You never know who might come across these items and by kind of advertising a very easy and direct link to somebody to talk to, it will hopefully help return these items uh, back to the British Museum collection. So I am not actually clowning on the British Museum today, but I'm sure just give it a few months and there'll, 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 there'll be something. <laughs> final story of the day that I want to talk about concerns two things that you wouldn't normally put together in the same train of thought. Pokemon and Van Gogh. Should Vin Vincent Van Gogh to the polls, kids? Pokemon go to the polls! If you haven't heard, there is in fact a Vincent Van Gogh museum in Amsterdam, 
and they teamed up with the Pokemon Company to create Vincent Van Gogh-inspired Pokemon art. Or maybe it's Pokemon inspired Vincent Van Gogh art. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so my first thought it was obviously this sounds really fun and really cool. Damn it, I wish I was in Amsterdam so I could go and see this. But my second thought might be a little bit contrarian. A lot of the media surrounding this that I have seen has talked about how they want to introduce new audiences to Vincent Van Gogh. But like, doesn't everybody kind of already know who he is? Like, isn't he one of the most famous painters, if not the most well-known, in the Western world? Like, there are so many projects and initiatives to introduce new audiences to Vincent van Gogh that you would think that this was part of, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe or something. I recently went to the Van Gogh Experience, which is a traveling exhibition where they uh, expand Van Gogh's paintings, project them up onto walls, animate them a bit, and you can walk through this giant room filled with these animations. And it was fine. I don't know, it was a bit of a letdown if I'm being honest. The images were kind of pixelated and there was nothing on the ceiling, so like halfway up your field of view there's just darkness. I posted about this on Instagram a couple weeks ago if you want to see my, my full short review, but I wasn't as impressed as I would have liked to have been. And maybe I'm just being nitpicky, but it was $35 to get in and I just, I was expecting a little more, you know? I was just, I was expecting a little more. I, maybe that's my hot take for this video is that uh, the Van Gogh experience wasn't worth it in my opinion. But there is a point to my long-windedness here. Why don't we feature any other artists with these sorts of things? And like, I know why this happens and why they chose Van Gogh. It's because Van Gogh is basically a brand name at this point. People know that it will sell. And the, I don't know, the, the commodification of Vincent Van Gogh has just, just kind of makes me a little bit sad. Supposedly there was a bit of a frenzy at the gift shop of the Pokemon Van Gogh exhibition as people just cleaned the entire thing out. And just a few hours later, there were already listings on eBay for some of this merchandise. The situation just kind of makes me a little bit sad, and I originally put this Pokemon Van Gogh story at the end of the video to end on a high note, and then of course I started writing about it and thinking critically about it for more than two seconds, and um, I still want to end this on a high note though, so I will say, the art is very sweet, and it's obvious a lot of thought went into what Pokemon should go into what paintings, and you know, if I was in Amsterdam, I would still absolutely go and see this. There's just a, a broader conversation that I think should be happening here, is I suppose all I want to say. If you do end up going, uh, please send me pictures because it looks really sweet and really fun. That is all that I have for you today though, folks. So if you did enjoy this video, please make sure that you hit the like button. And uh, if you do want to see more of these videos, uh, these news wrap ups, please let me know. And I will also be sure to make more if people like these. Thank you for coming along with me. And I hope that whatever else you get up to today, I hope that you have a nice time. And wherever you are, I hope that you have a wonderful day or evening, and I will see you next time.